Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Friday, March 22nd through Sunday, March 24th. Uh, this is your weekend edition. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. So just a little bit of a pointer here. I am not using my microphone. Um, I'm still talking pretty low. So I'm going to try this out and see how it works because many people were saying that um, it wasn't quite loud enough. And I do find that I get a louder input if I just use my regular computer. But Keep in mind that I am recording this early in the morning, so I do have to be kind of quiet, yes? So I'm not disturbing my neighbors and my roommates too much, right? Okay, so this is just going to be a general energy reading for the weekend. It's not specific to anything. This is just what Spirit would like to discuss with us at this time. Um, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. All of the information is in the description box below. I will be at Om Shanti Bookshop today, Friday, March 22nd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you would like to come by and see me, get an, an in-person reading, you are more than welcome to do so. And then also tomorrow, March 23rd, I will be be at Collective down on First Street in Manhattan. It's on First Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. It's a, well, yes, 2nd and 3rd Avenue. It's a great place. Um, come check it out. They have a nice high-end spa down there. They sell crystals. They sell, uh, so there's a nice cafe. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous spot. And then Om Shanti is on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Okay. <clears throat> And that's a fantastic bookshop also. They have all kinds of crystals and books and cards and all kinds of fantabulous stuff. And a bunch of readers, too. So, yay. <laughs> all right, guys. So without further ado, let's just get straight to it. <clears throat> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for... Our weekend edition of Friday, March 22nd through Sunday, March 24th. Thank you so much, Spirit. All righty. Let's see what we've got for the weekend edition. Weekend... Weekend edition here, guys. Friday, March 22nd through Sunday, March 24th. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got. All right, here we go, guys. Weekend edition. Best messages to be spirit. Friday, March 22nd through Sunday, March 24th. Two of Cups. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. The Knight of Cups. But the Knight of Cups has come out in reverse here. We can ditch it. Okay. All right, um, interesting. We have, underneath the deck, we have the Six of Cups here. So we're talking about the past. We're talking about a soulmate, potentially. Interesting, very interesting. Oops. So, we have this Two of Cups, the Knight of Cups in reverse the King of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords. All right, so we have an energy where there is some sort of soulmate bond, some sort of past life bond, potentially, um, you do with the Six of Cups, between the Six of Cups and the Two of Cups, okay? Um, and what I'm getting here is someone wants to make some sort of offer with this Knight of Cups. Sorry about that, guys. 
traffic. <laughs> the Knight of Cups here is talking about someone wanting to make some sort of offer, okay? Um, but it's not coming through yet. It's They're blocked in some way. King of Pentacles energy is this person, okay? So either this could be you or this could be someone that you're connecting with. Um, and the masculinity that comes into play here would be moving forward and making some sort of offer. But this person is focused on pentacles, finances, physical representation, money, status. Um, and it's looking like they're wanting to have some sort of greater stability. They are, they're working on doing some sort of healing with the Six of Swords here. Okay. That's, that's one scenario. Another scenario, oh no, well, let me finish that. Um, they're working on doing some sort of healing here, and this has a lot to do with the mental side of things, I would absolutely say. Um, there are some maybe some old habits or um, uh, thought patterns, belief systems, uh, circumstances in their life that they're trying to clear up first before they come forward. I do think, I do really feel like this person that's represented by the King of Pentacles here does recognize this this Six of Cups, Two of Cups energy, um, but just isn't feeling comfortable enough or solid enough to make an offer, to come forward, you know, to pursue anything. There's another scenario that I'm seeing here for a small group of you of which, yes, you guys are aware of the connection between the two of you, but someone's not moving forward, and as a result, someone else is moving away from the situation, but not completely. It's like you're moving away from the situation with the Six of Swords. You're just moving away from the dramatic or the drama aspects of the situation. I just heard trying to see eye to eye. So you could be moving away from any sort of judgment, um, ridicule, maybe really working on seeing the other person's point of view, which is leading you to just kind of like back away from the situation a little bit. Um, and that doesn't feel like a bad thing. It actually feels like a good thing because it's out of respect for the person and, you know, what they are going through in their own life. You're not trying to make it a big old deal. You're not trying to um, pressure them in any way. You're just like, oh, oh, um, let me not get involved with that. <laughs> and it could, yeah, it could be kind of like, a, oh, that's your deal, buddy. I want nothing to do with that. But it also could be a situation where it's like, damn damn, that sucks. Okay, well, I'm going to let you handle that. You let me know when you're ready. That sort of situation. Okay. So, we're going to move into the clarification section here. And... I'm going to focus it on advising advice on the situation. All right. So clarification here. Um, but in clarification spirit, can you give us advice on how to handle this situation? For the person that wants to move forward and wants to make some sort of offer, For the person that is healing, doing some, definitely doing some sort of inner soul searching is what I'm hearing. Two sixes, six of cups, six of swords. So the energy of this reading is saying to me that someone really just wants greater healing first before they move forward with some sort of offer. Um, especially with the King of Pentacles energy, there's a desire for greater stability here before they come forward. All right, I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then I'm just going to pull. And I'm going to tell the story. Why am I being... Don't worry. Okay. So, advice in this situation, please, spirit.
<laughs> King of Cups. Woo! Okay. Well, that was sure a lot. Look at that, you guys. We've got the Six of Cups underneath the deck here. So the Six of Cups is underneath both decks. We have the King of Cups, Six of Wands, the Empress, the Knight of Cups, and this time it's upright, the Five of Cups, oop, the Lovers Reversed, okay, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is coming out reversed, though. Interesting. This is very interesting, you guys. Okay, take, uh, th this is... Ah, ha, 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 ha. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay, this is a general reading, guys, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But first and foremost, you have this... You have both the Six of Cups has come out again. Six of Cups is underneath the deck. And you have the Knight of Cups has come out. Yeah. This time the Knight of Cups has come out upright, but the Queen of Cups in the counterpart situation between the King and the Queen, the Queen has come out reversed. Um, and I have a very strong feeling as to why the Queen is reversed, but we're going to get into that in a second. The first set of cards we have here, the first set of cards we have is the Lovers, which is in reverse, with the Seven of Pentacles and the Five of Cups. Okay. So, there's been a lot of heartbreak because either this is about the situation that is trying to restart itself for you or this is about past situations. Either way, it's about um, learning from the past with the Seven of Pentacles here, okay? And did I say Seven of Cups before? I meant Seven of Pentacles. I don't know if I said that correctly. It doesn't matter. Um, the lovers was in reverse, so there either was a situation with a different person in which things did not go well, obviously, because that's coupled by, or that's accompanied by the five of cups here. Things did not go well, or it's a situation um, with this same person in the past. Either way, things did not go well. But the beauty here is that lessons have been learned with the seven of pentacles, or maybe lessons are still being try are still trying to be learned here. The, the the difficulty is that it feels like someone is kind of stuck in that lesson. They're kind of like it's almost like a complex has been formed, and now they're like, shit, what do I do moving forward? I never want to recreate a situation like that again, especially if you're dealing with the same person. You're definitely saying, I never want a, I never want a situation like that to, between us to happen again. But how do I move forward? Okay. Well, here do we come here we come to the next part of the equation, which was I guess which really is the um the um advice part of the equation. We have the King of Cups, the Six of Wands, the Empress, the Knight of Cups, and the Queen of Cups. But the Queen of Cups is reversed. Why is the Queen of Cups reversed? Well, there are emotions at play. And I really do feel like, for the most part, the Queen of Cups is reversed because of the fact that the King of Cups is hesitant in moving forward, in taking some sort of action. It could be, it could be that the Queen of Cups is unaware of what this King of Cups would like, what the King of Cups wants. The, 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 this is about, uh, with the Six of Wands here, this is about having the confidence, okay? It's also about a victory here. The Empress is talking about abundance, fertility. And I guess, really, if you want to look at it, you could look at it in this way. Either there is an abundance of energy or potential for reconnection between you and another person, this person potentially that you dealt with in the past, or there is an abundance of people, a plethora of people out there that match your vibration that would be, that would, you would be able to communicate with or connect with.
for the most part, this feels like For the most part, this feels like whoever you're connecting with here, and either one of you could be masculine and feminine, and that doesn't matter. Um, I know I've been speaking about, you know, the balance between masculine and feminine for quite some time, and now that I've kind of come to a deeper understanding of that, I do see how I personally am going back and forth constantly. Here, the only distinction, the way you would dis to make the distinction between masculine and feminine is whoever would be desiring to make some sort of move and reach out and, and get something started. That would be the one that's embodying the masculine energy right now. So this could be you or it could be someone that you're connecting with. Um, who For whomever would want to be taking the action or acting from the masculine point of view, you need to just do it. Just go ahead and do it. The Queen of Cups is reversed more so because there has been no communication. So now this Queen of Cups, whoever the feminine aspect of the situation is, is kind of sitting back wondering, it's like, oh, well, now what do I do? Do they even really like me? Like, I thought we had a connection and now I'm not hearing from them or they're not saying anything or we're barely talking to each other, blah, blah, blah. That's because of this. The lovers in reverse, whatever happened in the past. So the Six of Cups act is not only talking about um, is not only talking about the connection that you have with this person, but it's also talking about the past that is kind of holding things up. Okay, um, I'm feeling called to pull once more. I'm gonna use the unicorns. Some of these cards I never. I never straightened these out. Last time I used them was for like a happy hour thing and they all just kind of flew out of my hand. And I thought a bunch of them turned upside down and I didn't want to spend the time. And it looks like I'm going to be doing that now because I want to use this deck for this. There's 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 like a little bit more of a message that wants to come through. So I'm being, I'm being called to pull once more for this situation. I just want to straighten out the cards first. Give me a second. Okay, we're good. All right. Um, there's a final piece of advice that's wanting to come out here. So I'm just going to shuffle this up a little bit. Guys, bear with me a little bit. One more. And... Just, just a few cards, Spirit. Nothing major. I'm not gonna pull the whole. I'm not gonna shuffle, pull the whole deck. But um, final guidance in this situation, please, Spirit. Final guidance. That's there. Okay. Perfect. King of Swords is underneath the deck. All right. Death, the Hermit, Two of Swords, Queen of Cups again, and the Two of Wands in reverse. All right, so, yeah. Okay, well, you have the Two of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands came out in reverse, and these fell over here on this past situation. Seven of Pentacles, the Lovers in Reverse, and the Five of Cups. What does this mean? Well, it means that there is no real decision to make anymore. Um, well, that could be it. It could also be that, you know, you need to make a decision, but you're, you're, uh, maybe you're refusing to be honest with yourself. You're refusing to see the truth of the situation. Um, and... Your, um, spirit is just saying you're needing to go for it. Queen of Cups is the counterpart to this King of Cups. So again, we're going to continue with the narrative of the Queen of Cups being the feminine aspect, the one that's waiting for some, some sort of decision or some sort of communication, right? Uh, so 
I'm feeling this two ways, but they, they fit hand in hand. The first way is that there is no real decision that needs to be made anymore. You know which direction you want to be going in. But you're still indecisive about it. There's apprehension, there's fear. The other way I'm seeing it is that you're trying to decide, you're getting caught up in trying to decide how to approach the person. So like there really is no decision that needs to be made because you're like, well, do I or don't I wanna do it? Because now the Queen of Cups energy is upright. In between this Two of Swords, Two of Wands, Two of Wands being in reverse. So with the Two of Wands being in reverse, number one, you know which way you want to go. You know what action you want to be taking. But number two, you're trying to decide how to take that action. But I feel like that's procrastination, Two of Swords. That's just kind of like, and, and the energies of, you know, trying, wanting to be more stable or blah, 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 and more financially sound and blah, blah, blah. That's like, that's a form of procrastination too. King of Swords is underneath the deck here. Objective thinking, seeing things clearly, seeing them for what they are, recognizing the opportunity that you have in front of you, like now. Okay. And then you have death and the hermit. So for any of you that have been wondering, for those, for like the masculine side here that has been wanting to make some sort of, take some sort of action, make some sort of move. If you've been wondering if you have changed enough, I mean, this is speaking to the, what I was picking up in the procrastination energy of the King of Pentacles with the Six of Swords. The King of Pentacles energy is almost feeling like a little bit of a perfectionist. It's like, well, I know I don't think I'm ready. I need to move forward. I need to do something, but you are ready. If you've been feeling the urge, if you've been getting the guidance, you're ready to at least open the lines of communication. This doesn't have to be a big thing, but start communicating again, especially if it's someone that you know you, you have been disconnected from in the past, like been in separation with. Follow your inner light is what this is saying. You've gone through a massive trans, a pretty large transformation. In some cases, a massive transformation with death. And you've come into greater alignment with yourself, the hermit. You could be dealing with a Scorpio or a Virgo also. But follow your inner light is what this is saying. Follow the inner light that you've worked so hard in transform transforming towards, like in cultivating. Yes? Yes. Okay. We are going to get some oracle guidance now, and I think I want to do the animal spirits. Ooh. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my stomach. <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay. Okie dokie, here we go guys. Best message please, spirit. In uh, advice, guidance please, here we go. Just one. Lamb, aww. Okay. That's an interesting card for this situation. Let's see what we say. Peaceful, prophetic, patient. The lamb is the bearer of an important message. Its contents can only be heard when a deep level of quiet has been established. Lamb energy is the honest guidance you hear from an old friend, a young child, or sometimes a surprising stranger. Though the lamb's message may channel through another person, the wisdom resonates within you. It will repeat and reverberate until you listen. Approach this gentle creature with utmost patience and reverence. Truth is a gift. Sit still listen and receive when in balance lamb is lamb has knowingness and inner peace when out of balance lamb is quiet timid and concerned to bring into balance one must do some meditation or just listening and it's so funny because it's like is spirit sitting here saying you should listen to eric because 
<laughs> I really hope I, I really that's like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be on that ego tip like I'm just doing what I can to help <laughs> but maybe that was encouragement for some of you out there to say hey this random stranger doesn't know your life but he's channeling something a message for you maybe you should take his advice I don't know I swear to you guys I did not plan that you saw me shuffle and pull <laughs> oh god Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to get one more card from, from this deck. So give me just a second. Let me reshuffle. Just, just one more card of advice here, please. <laughs> That's funny. All righty. Here we go. One more card, please, Spirit. Best message. For the weekend edition, in terms of this frog. Okay. Froggy. Here we go. Okay, frog. Clearing, cleansing, healing. The frog and the water element are almost inseparable. The frog spends its first months of life entirely within this healing element and then emerges to rest on land. But no matter how, quote, earthly the frog becomes, its need for cleansing and rejuvenation is regular. Frogs tend to become overworked and undernourished, so it's vital that such sensitive creatures practice self-care. This card serves as a reminder that water helps us cleanse, forgive, and release. Time to dive in, frogs aren't meant to carry a heavy load. When in balance, frog is clear, has clear energy and enthusiasm for life. When out of balance, frog feels depleted and is running on ener and empty. To bring into balance, one must go spend time by a lake, a river, an ocean, or in a bathhouse. And it's interesting because there's a lot of water energy that has come out in this reading between the Two of Cups, the Six of Cups, twice, okay? The Six of Cups, the Six of Cups, the Two of Cups, the Knight of Cups, the Five of Cups, the Queen of Cups, the King of Cups, the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Cups. <laughs> Lots of cups. But to me, that is saying that it, it's time for you to be cleansed of this. You know, if you've been dealing, if you've been in separation with from someone and now you're and you've been on the masculine side and you like ghosted or you like separated or whatnot and you've been going your own way but now you've been feeling the urge or the guidance towards coming forward and saying something like at least just trying to open the lines of communication i'm not saying you guys have to jump back in right where you started and this is definitely mirroring last or yesterday's reading but um I'm not saying you have to jump right back into where you left off, but you can at least like try start communicating with each other again, you know? Starting to maybe build a friendship again. That was the Oracle card from the unicorns yesterday, friendship. Work on building a friendship with someone. And even if it's someone new, don't let your past stop you from opening up or communicating with somebody, you know? Building a friendship. Okay, I'm going to close the reading with some Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. All right, Spirit. Best message, please, to close out this reading. Here we go. Relief and repair. Card number 36, which boils down to a nine, which is endings. Something about to come full circle, potentially. Relief and repair. Let me move this out of the way. We bring you the blessing of relief and repair. Our warmth and nurturing will restore and rebalance your body, mind, and soul when the light of spirit burns too brightly. Spiritual light is like the light of the sun. It brings life and joy, but too much can burn. 
If that happens to you, you will feel overwhelmed, overheated, overexcited, and or overstretched mentally, physically, or emotionally. We will help you recover and increase your ability to be exposed to spiritual light again in future without becoming overloaded or burnt out. We ask you to soften and relax into our rich red energy now, which nurtures you with the cooling, restorative life force of the Earth Mother. We shall help you naturally discharge excess energy whilst we revive, strengthen, and fortify you with our nourishing grace. Okay, that's nice. Let me read this paragraph. The Oracle of Relief and Repair comes with a message about your spiritual growth. You may or may not be aware of it, but you are learning to call more spiritual light into your body, your mind, and your life. Perhaps you have been praying for to the universe more, asking for help. Perhaps you have been meditating more often or reading spiritual books and opening your mind to new levels of consciousness. Or perhaps your soul has just been growing, even if you don't quite know why it is happening or recognize it consciously. This is all good. However, your body needs time to adjust to the increase in light. If you just keep going without taking a short break, it will be like continuing to eat and eat and eat without taking time to digest and eliminate in between meals. Although it may be eating very good, although you may be eating very good quality meals, in time it won't matter. It will just become too much. So the oracle will help you. Take a short rest and repair now so you don't become unwell or overloaded and need to take a much longer break later on. You are being given healing and you need it. When you have a strong spirit that has conditioned your body and mind to simply keep up, it can be easy to forget that although your spirit is an unlimited being, your body and mind exist within a reality held together with the parameters of time and space. This means that although your spirit doesn't need sleep or recovery time, your body and mind certainly do. Aha, here we go. This oracle also indicates that any situation that may appear to be never ending is not so, and any brokenness of heart or will, defeat or apparent failure can and will be resolved and restored through the hand of her radiant grace. She will bestow her blessing of relief and repair upon you and your life situation. Allow her grace to resolve your life circumstances as she sees fit so you can be revived by her rich, warm life force. When the Divine Mother turns her attention to a matter, there is no such thing as a lost cause or inevitable defeat. Her ways are many and her resources great. When she decides to animate something that may have otherwise seemed devoid of life, her power is that of the Phoenix, rising again after all has seemed lost. Allow her to serve your body, mind, and spirit in the way that best serves you now. Surrender into her tender, loving care. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you all again very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Bye.